Hi guys, um, my name is Samantha, and this is an intermediate listening class. Hi guys. So uh, today we're going to be watching a TED Talk. Um, it's about five minutes long, and then we're going to be discussing it. So if you are a premium member, you can join class now. Hi, Raphael. You can guarantee your seat in class. It's $25 to sign up for a month of premium membership, and it's worth it if you're tired of waiting for a seat in class. So the first two minutes are reserved for premium members, and then everybody else can join us after that. So, hey, Raphael. Hello, good morning. How good are you? Good morning. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. It's morning in your country? It is. It's, it's uh, 8 a.m. for me. Uh, <laughs> what time is it for you? 8, 8 a.m. for okay, me. Okay, so <laughs> we're in the same time zone. So where, where are you from? From Spain. Oh, cool. Whereabouts in Spain? The, what about? Where in Spain? Uh, from Madrid, in the capital. Oh, I, um, I might be moving to Spain next year. Yeah. So maybe I'll see you. <laughs> I'm looking oh. for a teaching job in Spain, maybe Madrid. Uh, yeah. Oh, um, I hope you find it. It's I know. Very, you... It's very easy right now because every people of every people is learning English as soon as possible. Because yeah. <laughs> uh, we are in crisis and all, yeah. all the hope is in another country and we need to talk in to talk English. You, yes, you know. definitely. Um, there's definitely lots of jobs, so hopefully I can find one and help help you guys out over there. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Do you like living in Madrid? Yeah, it's it's very it's very nice. It's it's very comfortable too. A, a little bit to stress it city, but it's very comfortable. <laughs> yeah, it can be pretty busy. Yeah, she. I think all big cities are like that, right? It can be a little bit stressful sometimes. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. You are welcome. You ca call me, please, if you if you can, and I can help you. <laughs> all right, you can give me the tour of Madrid. <laughs> yeah, see. Perfect. Great, great cool. idea. <laughs> Hi, everybody. And hi, hello hi, again. Hi, if hi. I just saw you in my last class. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think this class is titled Intermediate, um, but it's kind of for all levels. If you're more advanced, it's fine because we're going to do lots of discussion, so you'll get a chance to kind of give us your opinion. Um, cool. So how is everyone? Happy Valentine's Day. If you celebrate Thank Valentine's you. Day. You too. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Hi, Igor. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, thanks. And if you guys are watching from outside, we've still got a couple seats, so you can come hang out with us if you want to. I'm just going to share the document. I think I put this document on the class description, but I'll give it to you anyways. <laughs> Here it is. So what we're going to be doing today is watching a TED Talk. Have you guys watched TED Talks before? What yes. What What is a TED Talk? Can somebody tell us? Ideas, ideas that uh, spread the world. Yeah, so it's uh, TED.com is a website where um, they post videos of people, people's uh, presentations of inspirational ideas, and um, lots of people watch them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> Um, I think you guys should be able to see the document now in Google Drive. Let me know if you have any trouble. No. And sorry if there are any typos. I, I just made it last night quickly, and I didn't get a chance to read it over. So hopefully it's okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, good morning. Hi, how are you? Good morning. So, um... Uh, my, uh... Fine, thank you. My name uh, is Khaled Devi, in uh, from Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh, in Kuwait. Cool. So, um, before okay. we start, I want you guys so to just tell me your name, where you're from, and one thing you want to do before you die. 
So this is kind of to warm us up for this the topic that we're about to look at. So I'll go first. Uh, my name is Samantha. I'm from Canada. And one thing I want to do before I die is visit at least 50 countries. Yes, at least. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> Renee, what about you? Uh, hi, my name is Rene. I am from Mexico, and I think um, I want to to learn how to play the an, an harp. Harp. The harp. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> that is so random. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've got to take some harp lessons. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what about you, Rafael? My my name is Rafael. I'm from Spain, from Madrid. Um, happy Valentine's Day for everyone. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, I I wanna do before I do um, go to the Tibet to, uh, to see the Dalai Lama. All right, very cool. Cool. And um, okay, Ka Kazumasa, did I say Hello. that properly? <laughs> yes. Okay. I'm Kazu. My name is Kazu, and I'm from Japan. And one thing you, uh, I want to do before you, my, I die. Uh, I want to go all over the world, every countries. Even more ambitious than me, I said fifty. You're like, nope. I want to go to every yeah. single country. <laughs> That's gonna take a long time. <laughs> cool. So you go by uh, Kazu. Mm -hmm. Kazu. Okay. Yes. Um, hey, hey, Igor. Yes. Uh, hi, I'm Igor. I'm from Republic of Moldova. And um, for me, this question sounds uh, very weird. Okay. Because it sounds like uh, you ask me uh, if I die in, uh, in this year, what I will do for me. It's, uh, I don't know. I will... Okay, I just will not um, die. Let's, let's reword uh, the question. So... In this year or uh, 10 years, I will live and... Uh, I do not have plans uh, what I will do before Is there I die. Any one thing that you really, really want to do in your life that you haven't done yet? No, it's all uh, on the way, all on okay. the plans. It's uh, all okay. I don't cool. have any something that I want to do. And no problem. What about you, Hoyan? Hello, everyone. My name is Hoyan. I'm from Vietnam, and uh, yeah, I want to. Win a lottery before I die. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Good <Ew>. idea. <laughs> Win the lottery. Okay, what about you, Hector? Yeah, well, my name is Hector Hernandez. I am from Monterrey, Mexico. And the thing that I would like to do before I die is fly a plane. Oh, uh, cool. Fly yeah. a plane. Um, a I think I would be way too scared to try to fly a plane. <laughs> Like John Travolta or something like that. Yeah, cool. Um, what about you, Imad? Uh, I'm Imad. I'm from Syria. And the thing uh, I would like to do before I die is to travel uh, abroad and to visit many countries because I also uh, I share your idea of traveling out. Cool. Awesome. And um, how do I pronounce your name? I just see the, the characters that are not in English, and I'm not sure how to say your name. His name is Khalid. Khalid? Yeah. This? Hey, Khalid. Are you there? OK. We'll come back. And Wolfgang? Uh, hi. I'm, my name is Shane. I'm from China. Shane. Uh, one thing I would like to do before I die, um, and that would be uh, to experience zero G. To experience what? Um, zero gra oh. gravity. Ooh. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I want that too. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I changed mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's weird. All right. Cool. Very cool. Um, okay, so if you look at our document, we're going to be looking at a TED Talk by Candy Chang, and it's titled, Before I Die, I Want To. So... Um, some of the vocabulary in the chat, or sorry, in the video, I've just uh, made a list of some of the words you might not know. 
So I'll share my screen really quickly. We've got unexpected, deep gratitude, clarity, piracy, neglected, constructed, passionate, and perspective. Does everybody know what all of these words mean, or would you like any of them explained? Deep gratitude. Deep gratitude. Any ideas what, what this means? When you're Power. thankful. Yeah, very appreciative of something or someone. And uh, you're full of piracy. great. Thankful. Very thankful. Is having deep gratitude. You're very, very thankful, very appreciative of someone or something. Is everybody okay with piracy? Piracy. What is piracy? Is it driven from by pirates? From the pirates? No, not um, no. not talking about pirates. It's talking about um, downloading things on the internet illegally. Piratery. Oh. So. Okay. Steal. Yeah, like, stealing, yeah. stealing things, um, downloading um, movies, music illegally on the internet is considered internet piracy. So you're not really a pirate, <laughs> but um, okay. What about the other words? Neglected. Perspective. Perspective. What does perspective mean? How you Very see. Notable. Yeah, exactly. How you see something is your perspective. So everybody has a different perspective. I could say I look at things from a female perspective. And um, Hector looks at things from a male perspective. Point of view. Point of view, yep. Your point of view. Um, any other vocabulary? Clarity is very clear, no? Yeah, something that's very clear. Yeah. Neglected this is like to be careless? Neglected? Yeah, it, to neglect something is to... Um, be careless about something. Um, I not know. To ignore. <clears throat> Renee has a blackout. Oh no. Yeah, I ha only have uh, three minutes. <laughs> okay. Does that happen very often? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. That's why I'm prepared. <laughs> All right. Well, you have the document, so you can watch the video if you feel like it. It's an interesting talk. It's only about five minutes. Okay. I need to watch Snow White. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Sounds good. Thank you, thank you very <laughs> okay, much. Bye, Renee. See you tomorrow. Um, bye, guys. Yeah, so to neglect is to be kind of careless about something, not be concerned, not worry about something, really, is to neglect it. Any others? Constructed. Constructed. Built, basically. To construct something is to build it. Okay, so before we watch the talk, I want you guys to think about these pre-watching, I call them focus questions. So can you summarize this talk in a few sentences? What are the speaker's main ideas? Are they trying to persuade us of something? And how did the video make you feel? Did it um, evoke any emotions or did it make you think about anything in particular? And then afterwards, we've got this big list of discussion questions. So we probably won't get to all of those questions, but it's just kind of to lead our discussion um, following the video. So we're just going to watch it once. It's about, I think, just over five minutes long. So I'll give you guys the link to the YouTube video and I will also put it on the YouTube tab in the Hangout so we can watch it within the Hangout or you can watch it outside on your own browser whatever's easiest for so does everyone know how to get to the YouTube tab yes yeah over at the left there <laughs> and I'll just ask you guys to please mute yourself while we're watching the video and also, please don't touch the YouTube tab, because if you pause or anything, it will change for everyone. Okay? okay. Ready? Yes. Okay. okay. Perfect. Perfect.
Can you hear me? Sorry, I can't hear.
Okay. You guys there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, the first thing, I'm just going to give everybody a chance to talk. Um, I want you to kind of think about the, the questions I asked at the start. So, can we kind of summarize this talk? What are her main ideas? Is she trying to be persuasive in any way? And how does this video make you feel? So, I'll paste the, the questions in the chat again. There they are. I have a question from video. Uh, why in New Orleans is um, many houses abandoned? Okay. Like Does anybody know about Hurricane Katrina? Ah, yeah. due to this. It destroyed New Orleans. Um, does everybody know what Hurricane Katrina was? Yes. Yeah. So if you if you don't know about it. Um, well, you, I mean, you could just take a quick look at the Wikipedia page. There's that. Um, but it was in a massive hurricane, and it pretty much wiped out New Orleans. And um, there's been a lot of efforts in New Orleans to kind of build the houses back up and to put it back together and fix it. But there's still a lot, a lot of wreckage, um, a lot of abandoned buildings, a lot of ruined houses like the one that she showed us that's boarded up like that because they just don't have the funds um, to really fix everything or the manpower. Um, a lot of people who did live there and kind of face the tragedy have moved away now. So that's kind of what she's referring to. And you can see she's very emotional, right? And she lost someone in the hurricane, so she's very emotional about that. And yes. then I guess looking at it kind of all inspired her. So um, yeah, so maybe let's just each take a few minutes to kind of talk about your reaction to the video, did it make you feel anything in particular? Um, sometimes seeing someone that emotional can evoke emotions in you, so just kind of curious to see what you guys thought about her idea. So maybe we'll start with Imad. Yeah. So uh, okay. kind of what she's talking about, clear. you have the questions there, so go for it. Yeah, she's, she was talking about uh, that she started to feel uh, that she have to get something permanent in her life or to have uh, some meaning for her life. And she got this idea about to ask questions in this abandoned house. Instead of leave, leaving it like a dead place, she writes the question and left the space for everyone to feel his own idea about or his own answer. Uh, before I die, I will do. Everyone start, started to write his own thing, and she felt like this place come alive again. And uh, maybe it's okay after every hurricane, or after any disaster, we found that a lot of memories have have gone or like destroyed. So if you oh, sorry, Imad, you were just muted. So just click on your microphone. Um, yeah. Orkson, sorry, please don't mute people while they're speaking. I don't know if you meant to do that or not, but if you click on on someone else's microphone, it mutes them, and then we can't hear them. <laughs> so just avoid okay. doing that. Keep going, Iman. So, yeah, she in this in this inspiring idea, she brings the life to the to, to to abandon the place and also make meaning for life to understand. What we are doing in this life is kind of something we should have some permanent permanent goal or something like that. Yeah. What are the speaker main idea? Okay, I explained the main idea is to have meaning mm -hmm. of to, to give meaning for the life. Yeah, she pursuing that we should uh, we should care about uh, we should have permanent uh, thing, permanent memory or uh, we should share everything with each other. Sharing is very important, and she meant that sharing may bring the light for the abandoned house. How did the video make you feel? Okay, I felt like uh, well, the first time when I when she mentioned that uh, she she is from uh, uh, she was New Orleans. Or, yeah, New or New Orleans. I uh, I didn't understand that the hurricane was was there. So oh, okay. I was surprised when she was crying. I surprised and felt felt like uh, puzzled. What's the meaning of her crying? But when I understand everything, I understand that uh, it's, it's really 
meaning meaningful, yeah. Yeah, because their whole community was destroyed, right? And also yeah, she said yeah. that she lost someone very important to her. So yeah. probably pretty hard for her to talk to a big group of people about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, the feeling was like if you if you lost everything and you are when when you travel away from your home, you will start to feel uh, that uh, you start to feel like you want everything, even the bad memories, you want them back. So she 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 is uh, kind of uh, she, yeah. This is how I can't explain. Yeah, it kind of puts you in her shoes a little bit, makes you think about, you know, what would it be like if that happened to you? Yeah. Yeah. It happened for, for me, for example. It, it did happen to you? Yeah. I don't, know, don't like to speak about it right now, but my country, we have a civil war right now, and everything, everything is being destroyed or going to be ended like that because we're destroying each other there. So I have the same point, I have the same, that we should have something to care about more than uh, ourselves. So you could say that you can really empathize with her because yeah. you kind of, you know how that feels, right? Yeah, yeah. when we share emotion, we share emotion, we share life with each other, we should hire the value of these things, we should hire, hire the value of the community, not to feel mm -hmm. Living for ourselves. At the end of the day, we are people. And people have to be together, not to to live alone. That is us. Great. Okay. Thanks, Imad. Um, Hector, what did you think? Yeah. Well, I saw the video, and and I think that she lost a very important person, and for that reason, she started out with this project about what would you do before you died, and write it down what you think but to me I think that more to persuade us she's giving us a piece of advice and make us understand that life is too short to be worried about not important things but relation and love yeah definitely life is short right and I, I mean she must ha having lost someone so quickly made her realize that and then she was inspired to kind of try to get people to to step back a minute and think, okay, what is really important in my life, right? Yeah, because, for example, when I was uh, uh, in college, we were very worried about our notes. And someday a friend of mine dead or die, he dies, and he has a, a weird disease that he never knows that he had it before mm -hmm. and just it happens in one particular day when we were going to have a an exam a very important exam and that would that is when you realize that how important is your life yeah all right thanks Hector um, thank you uh, Hoyan, what did you think? Yeah, I have the same perspective with Hector. And yeah, I agree that she talked about that and uh, how important it is to remind yourself your dreams. So, mm -hmm. yeah, she used a house which is literally dead to remind people of their dream. I think so that's she, really interesting what you said, like how she actually took this house that kind of symbolizes, you know, everything that they all went through and how many people died. And then she tried to turn it around and use it to give people a place where they can recognize these dreams. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we don't all have to summarize. I think we kind of have the summary now, right? We know what it was about. So you can just focus on telling us how how it made you feel or what you thought about it. Do you pretty much agree with Hector? Wayne? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, Igor, what did you think about the video? I think uh, it's a sad story. Yeah. And, um, she lost uh, people uh, 
her mother and maybe uh, another people in the hurricane Katrina and she start thinking about uh, her life about the meaning of her life and she is in depression now I think or was in depression mm -hmm. and uh, that's why she start something um, different to do that she didn't do before and she start with uh, with house to draw to, to, to draw to write uh, ideas what will you do or how to say what uh, yeah you, what what would you do what would you do what would you do before you die and uh, she she I, I think uh, she she's in depression mm -hmm. not 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 very um, big depression but uh, some kind of uh, so you can say maybe that she's still coping she's still coping. she's still trying to cope with with her losses right she, yeah maybe yeah. she's not in full on depression yes, but yes. she's still surrounded by the tragedy in a lot of ways so you could say you know she's she's still trying to cope with everything or she's grieving you could say yes i, I think she uh, should um, something else to do start something else something more fun because okay. uh, um, you, think, you think this is maybe not helping her this project? No, because uh, I think he he think about uh, this about uh, die about this and uh, she is uh, go in this this tafel and he uh, she uh, it's it's not help for her. Yeah, I see what you her. mean. So maybe I, I, she should try to start some, a more optimistic project. Yes, uh, yes, so something uh, to start something else uh, more optimistic. How you say now, or uh, something to do to travel, for example, to France or in another country. So maybe like, something more fun because it's very sad for me. I'm not in this. Um, I in this. Um, I, I uh, don't have this. Um, Feelings like she ha ha has, yeah. Because I so, don't have this pain and I don't understand right. her. Yeah. So I mean, it's hard to um, to necess to completely understand what she's going through. I think a lot of it is that she's kind of grieving the loss of her community um, and just how much uh, Katrina destroyed New Orleans really upsets her, and she's trying to bring back a community focus and get everyone to focus on a project and things like that. Um, but you think it would be better if she started a project completely unrelated to death? Um, yes, yes. I think unrelated to what's going on in New Orleans? Like go, go on a vacation or something? <laughs> no, maybe related but not... Uh, uh, you see, this question is not uh, correct uh, right, to say so what you would do you do before you die. It's very sad question for me because so for me word. if someone will ask me uh, this question I think uh, he means that I will die in one year or in five years and mm -hmm. I have uh, too small amount of time and I should something to do but I think that's her point I think that's her point her point is that life is short and things can happen in, in a matter of seconds right people die really but, quickly sometimes but, and you uh, can think about you know focusing your energy to making sure that you've done everything that you have wanted to do in yes, but, you know but, I see what you mean though how the question is but, but this right? uh, so what point of view if you you look from her point of view yes but if you look from other people who have all uh, necessarily they mm -hmm. think something they, um, to answer John, uh, grief, grieving is not complaining. Grieving is feeling the emotions that you feel after somebody has passed away or after you've lost someone. That's grief. And grieving, you grieve your losses. So uh, she's grieving the loss of her mother or the mother figure that she had, her friend, and also grieving the loss of kind of the community in, in New Orleans. So John, no, grieving isn't complaining. But um, there's an expression called to to give someone grief. That has a little bit of a different meaning. If you're giving someone grief, it means like you're driving them crazy. You're really bothering them. Oh. It's a oh. different different meaning to that expression. Like in, like in a morning. Yeah. So if if you were asleep 
and I came into your room and started tapping on your head like wake up wake up wake up wake up wake up you'd be like oh my god leave me alone so that would be to give someone grief kind of really bother them um, but it's a di completely different meaning to grief so yeah Okay. Uh, cool. I want to summarize. I understand yeah, sure. her, but uh, I understand her, but I think it's not uh, for for her is something good to yeah to grief to <laughs> yeah. I understand. I see what you what you're saying. Maybe um, you should think about it uh, like a, a real situation or a, or an imaginary situation, not like the way that you have a gun on your head. And what would you do before die or something like that? I don't know, maybe you are thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, it can be a little bit depressing to think about. Um, but I think that is kind of her point, right? She's saying, like, she just lost someone out of nowhere and it just happened. And, I mean, Hector was saying, you know, that just happened with your friend. And when something like this happens, it makes you really rethink your own life. Like, what should I be doing right now? What is important? And it makes you kind of refocus things, focus on the important things and your dreams and stuff like that. So I, I, it can be a little bit depressing of a question, but it can also be inspirational, right? I mean, you want your life to have meaning and you want to do the things that... Yes, matter. but we didn't see a smile on her face when she... I think that's because she was crying. She was trying very hard not to cry because she was talking about her own losses. So maybe if she presented it differently and she was, like, really excited about you know, her project, then, then maybe it would have a different... Maybe topic. not excited, but uh, more enthusiastic, more enthusiastic, how to say, more... Optimistic again? Yes, optimistic. Uh, maybe. Okay. Um, Raphael, what did you think? Well, I, I have an, another point of view than Igor. Sure. I think, I think mm, one of the most difficult things in, in our life is to put in front of the death. Um, this, if, if you think in death, is the one of the most denied or refused um, thing in our lives. And if you think in death, you uh, you can change your life, as that girl as um, uh, has do has do. Uh, if you think in, in death, you um, you can think in what is important in your life and what is not. Because normally we are, we are thinking that our life is a continuous and we are um, omnipotent and we never die. <laughs> I think... <laughs> we like to think that, don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think all the people around you <laughs> could, be la could, could be die, but yourself Never. <laughs> no, no, you're you are invincible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but because you think... you're a bad boy and you you're afraid to go to hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but did you think in, in your life is a short time? Is very is 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 a short time and is very brief. Um, you can you can do another things. The most important. Normally, you are thinking in your work in your. Um, in your wife, in your problems, in your worries, but if you think as that girl as do it, mm, as done, uh, if you think your life is short, you can do another things. That's my point of view. <laughs> so think, thinking of your life as short can kind of push you, right, to do the do different things, better things. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, okay, so let's look at another question right at the start of the video you know how when you go to a hotel you have those little um, signs that you can put on the door mm -hmm. saying occupied or come clean my room at the very start of the video she was saying um, I have a question how can we lend and borrow things without knocking on each other's doors all the time that was one of the first questions she asked in the video and then she showed these the, a clip of two door handles two doorknobs with these little signs on them saying like um, I need to borrow and then you fill out a little form like for example you would write I need to borrow um, one pound of sugar and I need it by you know February 20th at this time here's my email address here's my address and then you hang it on your neighbor's door um, what do you guys what do you guys think about that concept I thought that was a little bit weird 
But she's saying rather than bothering people and knocking on their door, maybe we could, you know, hang these little <laughs> signs. I don't know if she was really proposing that, but she did show us the picture, and I thought it was interesting. So does anybody more, have any input about that? It's more about sharing. Yeah. In this way, you share everyone, even the people who get uh, uh, best, uh, or angry because of you knock their doors. You find a way to share them and to be to borrow and to lend them something. Maybe an idea, simple idea. If you share simple idea with someone, then you have shared something with them. Yeah, exactly. It's about sharing, and that we should share the things that we have because you know they're just things, um, and there's more important things in life. I mean, if someone needs a cup of sugar and you have extra sugar, why not share, right? Yeah. Any other opinions on this idea? Do you think it would work if we actually had these little share signs that we could hang on people's doorknobs? I don't I think, think that would work. You don't think it would work? Mm -hmm. Ryan, what do you think? <laughs> because if I have a short shooter, for example, and I see that sign, I would probably think that that person is crazy. So I'll not lend him shooter. So you'd probably look at the sign and be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes. This person's nuts. <laughs> but I I, think... May I? But, but I think um, this, is a, this is a good idea to share things or ideas, as said Hamed. Um, 50, 50 years ago, it was normally sharing all, all, all the things. Uh, because um, the capitalist um, institution <laughs> Don't be so hard. And in every little village, every people sharing a lot of things: fruit, fruit, eat, meal, things, help, support. But nowadays, uh, there are we are a lot of individualist person, and it's too difficult. You think if anyone come to your house to share anything, you think he's crazy, but it was normal 15 years ago in every country, I think. Mm -hmm. It could be one way. No, yeah, no. I mean, even when I was a kid, um, I used to knock on the neighbor's door for like an egg. If you're yeah. baking or, and you don't, you know, it's like I, I don't have time to go to the grocery store. Like, do you have an egg? Maybe, sure, here's an egg, you know, I mean, it's an egg, right? Yeah. So, um, exactly, I mean, in harder times, and I'm, there's lots of countries and places that are in hard times like this right now. Um, but in, in harder times, people tend to come together more and share more because they have to, right? Um, it just becomes like the community, communal nature of things to, to be more sharing and giving. I, I guess that he supported, he supported on the culture of the people because maybe here in Mexico, I'm not pretty sure that it would work because if you left your broom outside of the door, hey, I have a broom. You're never going to see it again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there, there might because be a little bit of some problem um, to this theory, the leaving when, things at the door. One time when I was watching uh, the the Google Maps, I was impressed when I was looking picture or images from another parts of the world that where they put their bicycles and their mother wheels and, and other things without a chain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I would never leave my bicycle unlocked actually my here. Um, I'm in Paris. I mean it's a big city. It's a busy city, right? Um, you can't trust everyone. There's a lot of pickpockets. But in smaller, some smaller towns, like, when I was growing up, I lived in a very, very small town in Ontario. It was a really small population. And I felt safer there, and I used to leave my bike laying around and stuff. <laughs> and it was never stolen. Um, but here, actually, my roommate, when I first moved here, um, we went down into the locker room, and she was showing me this really cool bike that she has with a basket on front, and she was all excited about it. And then the next day, it got stolen. She... <laughs> She, it wasn't even that it was unlocked, but she had it leaned against a pole just for like five minutes while she was sh um, shopping at a market, and then she turned around and it was gone. <laughs> like, oh. So you do have to, you have to be careful. 
And that's kind of pessimistic, well, right? I, Thinking I like, well, I don't want to share my broom. Somebody might steal it, right? <laughs> <But>. <laughs> Let me tell you that five minutes is a lot of time. But if you, when you go to the ATM, you have to be with one eye on the ATM and another eye looking the bicycle. <laughs> yeah, the ATM people tell you if you're at the ATM, you have to kind of, you know, cover it up and make sure no one's looking over your shoulder and, um, yeah. I don't know, maybe 10, 20 seconds, you don't look after your thing, and it's gone. Okay. Here's, <laughs> yeah. Here was that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, here's another uh, question. Another, The second question she asked was, how can we share more of our memories of our abandoned buildings and get a better understanding of our landscapes? So she was thinking specifically about New Orleans, right? But there's, I mean thousands and thousands of abandoned buildings around the world, different things that have happened, natural disasters, I mean wars, other things, where buildings have just been demolished. Um, so what do you think? She was saying, how can we share our memories? And then again, she showed a picture of a wall where people are writing memories on, on this wall. Do you think that's an effective method, having like a chalkboard wall for people to share memories? Or do you have any better ideas? You make it uh, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, you go ahead. Go on. Go ahead, Imad, and then we'll hear yeah. you later. Okay. Uh, it's a good idea, and it's not that expensive, and it may cost nothing. And you don't have to do something uh, very complicated uh, to get a Attention. People actually like simple ideas, and this is a simple idea, a very simple idea that gives the soil of social uh, living, and and we share everything in simple way. Uh, in my in my country, I remember that we sh there is a very big old tree. We used to grave our names on it. And I still remember how many friends of me uh, still have their names on that tree till now. <laughs> Even if it's that, it's that thing and very harmful, very harmful for that tree. But it's very good because we, after 20 or 30 years, uh, now we can uh, uh, we can say it will be there forever. And it's very nice memory, and I, I think it's very nice. It's like you when remember? you. How I told you I lived in a small town? Yeah. I had a tree too, and we all carved our names in the tree the same way. And then it got the tree got cut down, and it was like an enormous tree. It was so old, and the city cut the tree down to put in more buildings, and there was like community outrage about this tree being cut down. So it was very sad for me, but... I think that's that's a good. I mean, carving your name into something, marking it, yeah. and then I'm, right now, Imad, it would be cool for you to go back and see whose names are still in the tree, right? In the primary, in the primary school, I graved my name on the desk. That that was a, a woody, woody desk. I graved my name there, and ten years ago, I visited the primary school. It was abandoned. I found the the same chair. Uh, the same desk and found my name great with uh, that kind of uh, small uh, graph I make it find myself it's still there I make a picture for from it it's very nice oh, that's it's very cool. nice memory. yeah um cool Hector what were you gonna say yeah about the the abandoned walls and things like that here in Mexico well and specifically here in Monterey there are uh, a bunch of people who write letters that is called poetry action mm -hmm. and they write they write down verses on the wall and it's really nice to see that kind of messages while you're driving or while you're on the bus and is the poetry like um it's meant to kind of remind people about the building, or it's just kind of random whatever poetry that people, things people have written? No, I just, just they took a, a little part of the wall and they paint the, they painted uh, white, mm -hmm. and the letters look like a scrotal 
or like when a child writes and they write it down the, mm, the cool. words but just sometimes people do naughty things with that kind of uh, yeah. messages like like one that says in love with your eyes mm -hmm. and someone someone add the word red <laughs> okay yeah so people will vandalize <laughs> yeah. right like um, there's the possibility that someone will just come along with spray paint and write a big swear word yeah. on the wall or something. Um, there's always said, that possibility of vandalism. Yeah. And yeah. now he said, love with your red eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Anybody else have anything to add about that question? Oh, yeah. I, I think um, this is a problem also about relationships relationships and communication in big cities because right now I think it's too difficult to talk with someone in your in, in one big city you, uh, for example I, I I don't I am talking with you more than with my neighborhood in my in the same flat yeah. uh, my neighbor my neighbor I told I've been told him only good morning good afternoon bye bye yeah um, I uh, in ev in every big city you, you can't share your emotions or your feelings only with your friend no more. And um, if you put a house in the middle of a town and you can write down whatever you think or whatever you feel, uh, this is a good ver a very good idea because you are sharing your feelings or your emotions with other people. And this is a good thing for everyone, I think. Yeah, for sure. Um, any other ideas? Another way that um, if we're talking specifically about abandoned buildings and remembering them, I mean, you could put up a memorial as well, something like um, a statue with names of people who may have passed away, and then people could also write on that. But yeah, I think it's I think it's a really cool idea, and I think it was Imad that said, you know, it's it's simple but it's effective. Like just put up a chalkboard and let people write, and you'd be surprised at the number of people who who want to say something. And it's the same here, Raphael, in Paris. I mean, it's so busy, and it's just <laughs> sometimes you feel kind of lonely, even though you're surrounded by thousands of people, right? Um, and I never talk to my neighbors. They're like, hello, hello, bye, bye. That's it. And <laughs> uh, I remember when I lived in a smaller town it was more of a community feeling where you have like your houses next to each other and it's kind of slow a slow paced environment you get time to talk and yeah. it depends on where you live a little bit I think hmm. yeah okay here's another question um, let me tell you that it was a really interesting topic because it, it five minutes to go. I know it went by really quickly. I still have a lot of questions, but and it, and it I figured that would happen because there's a lot to say. I think about the topic, um, even though the video is pretty sad um, because she is sad. I don't think the idea itself has to be, you know, a depressing idea. I think she was just trying not to cry because she was thinking of her own, you know, personal experiences and stuff. But I think it's actually a really inspirational video. I think anyway. Um, and then she also was saying, you know, after she put up the wall, she got all of these emails and letters from people who wanted to put up a wall in their own community. And then she gives us a link. I think it's before I die. Cc, I believe. Let's see if it works. Yeah, that's the link. And they they created um, a kit where you can actually make your own wall in your own community. And I'm just going to share my screen to show you guys um, kind of the effect that this has had. So if you look at my screen, Guatemala, we've got Guatemala City, Innisfil in Canada, there's a wall in India, in Durham in the States, Irvine, Rio de Janeiro in Brazil, Another one in the States. There's one in Brazil, USA. So there's there's all sorts of um, people who have been affected by this and, and put up walls in their own communities. This one looks pretty cool. Check out that wall in Rio de Janeiro. Very nice. 
pretty neat, artistic. So, and then they put together a kit with the stencil that says before I die so you can just rub chalk all over it and build your own wall in your own community. Just pretty cool. So she's trying to kind of spread the message, I think, a little bit. Um, trying to maybe inspire some people to look at it the same way. Um, uh, uh, question. Uh, on this side, I see um, shop. Uh, so you shop. can buy something from... Uh... I think what you can buy is the kit. So the kit to, um, to build your own wall. Here, I've shared my screen again. The Before I Die Toolkit, it says. So they give you instructions. They give you chalk and this stencil and everything so you can build your own wall. And how much costs it is? So? It says $125 in the English language. Uh, and I don't know. We, I, I'd have to look a little bit more at the website, but hopefully um, some of these profits are going towards... I, I would assume that a lot of the profits are going towards New Orleans and building up the community, but we could take a look and see if we can. Yeah, it's $125. It says made in New Orleans, ships internationally in a week. Um, yeah. And where okay, are my goals? Lang language toolkit. So you can get it in a language other than English if you want to. But this is the bad issue. <laughs> at, at the end, all this money. <laughs> also, that idea that I know. <laughs> it's a market. I know. It's a marketing issue. It turns into a marketing <laughs> thing rather than a community thing, right? Um, but I, I think, I think it's for charity. I'm not uh, sure. I'm trying to find where it tells us. No, I'm us. not sure. <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's for profit. Um, it's she's, all about she's earning, it's she's all earning about some money. money yeah. while and and more. does this kind of twist the idea a little bit? You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like um, every a day, we we have to pay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I think it's kind of defeated its purpose a little bit, maybe with the making you purchase the kit, but. I mean, you don't have to buy a kit. You can just make your own wall, right? I mean, nothing's forcing you to buy this kit. I mean, buy a, buy a box of chalk and make, you know. <laughs> um, I, I think it's a we, cool idea. Samantha, but Samantha. We, already, we already found the old trick on the book. <laughs> you found the what? I, wa I, wa I want to I wanna put a, um, a letter in the wall. Please, anything free in the live. <laughs> Babbling. <laughs> I we need ed, anything free. <laughs> we we'll get the twenty five the twenty five bucks. <laughs> Alpha. <laughs> right away. All right, guys, we're almost out of time, but that was a fun class. Uh, lots of really stuff fun. to talk about. So, um, in that document on Google Drive, there's actually a full transcript of the video. So, if you didn't understand some of what you heard, you can read it if you want to. Um, and here is my. Verbling page and my Facebook page, so you can follow me or whatever if you want to post comments and whatnot. So yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in some more classes soon. It was nice to meet everybody. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye guys. Bye.